the carnage that is experienced on farms sometimes as a result of animals meeting black mamba, mambas in an inappropriate uh, space is unbelievable. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. Farmers lose a lot of livestock to mambas from time to time. And I've been called often to capture mambas that have been killing cattle and other animals. Um, it's quite a thing, you know, mambas are very skittish. Big snake, they can grow to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 feet. Their venom can have a man down on the ground in 20 minutes. Animals can die very quickly. Dogs in particular die so fast you almost can't believe it. You think you're watching a movie. They die so quickly. They can kill several cattle in one go. They kill giraffes. Uh, do you know how big a giraffe is? E ever stood next to a giraffe? I'm sure a lot of you have. Well, what happens in Africa is uh, mambas, black mambas, are tree climbing snakes as well as ground living snakes. They climb very well. And in the large acacia trees in the bushveld, uh, birds nest and mambas, of course, go up there looking for birds. Also, there are hollows in trees where tree rats live, other rodents, bush babies, uh, squirrels, and these they eat as well. So they go up in the trees. A giraffe comes along and starts munching away because the giraffes love acacia leaves to eat. And every now and then there's an accident and the mamba bites the giraffe and that's the end of the giraffe. It's, I've even known, funnily enough, a cobra not so long ago killed a giraffe, but it was a very big cobra, I must admit. Cobra, I mean giraffe obviously stood on it and then it bit the giraffe in the leg and that was the end of that. So, the first time I was called out for one of these events was when a farmer, and I recorded this in the book I wrote, <coughs> A farmer had lost on one occasion several cattle, I think it was seven. Can't remember right now, but I think it was about seven. What had happened is it was a very hot day. It was very bushy around the watering hole. A mamba was obviously in the bush having gone himself for a drink. The cattle had almost stampeded to the water, which they very often do when they're thirsty. The first cattle uh, arriving at the water hole surrounded the mamba unbeknown to them because there was no bush um, in, in, a, in a stretch around the water hole and a bit of dense bush right next to the water hole and that's where the mamba was and the cattle just barged into that bush and around the water hole. The mamba panicked and biting several cattle. Well a lot of them died including if I remember one of his bulls, one of his really precious bulls also died. I was called to catch that mamba, which I did. It's a long story, but it is in my book, which you have probably seen, because it's in on one of the videos. In remarkable situation. It was a big mamba. I did catch it, so he was relieved. No more cattle dying from that mamba bite. But this has happened many times. But one time I will never forget because this poor lady lived by herself and she just loved her animals and she had this beautiful horse. She had a tame pig, a tame sheep and a tame goat. And these were her companions. And she didn't live that far from where, where our farm was. And it was a remote area, very dense wild bush no crops, no cattle, just very, very wild. And she lived in this house and she had a paddock where her horse uh, used to live. And she had the other animals with a small um, uh, shed for, for the, the sheep and the pig and the goat. This tree grew out of the ground, went along the ground a bit, up, and then a cross, and then it branched out and became very bushy. And below the bush 
was an old bath. And in this bath, the animals used to drink. She had a, a pipe running from the borehole to the bath with a tap, and she would go and turn on the tap, fill up the bath, and on the hot days, the animals would come there and drink and stand under the shade of this ridiculous looking tree that grew up and then had the leafy, uh, branchy bit above the bath. So she phoned me one day and she said, um, could I please come? There is a big mamba and my goat has been bitten and the goat is dying. Could I do something? I went there. The goat was already dead when I arrived. Goats are one of these things that die very quickly when bitten by a mamba. Mamba was gone. She couldn't stand there obviously and uh, uh, watch the mamba because she was very frightened and she was trying to save the goat. How I don't know. She was giving it mouth to mouth or something, I don't remember, but uh, poor goat died and I was not going to waste uh, uh, 60 or 70,000 or 100,000 rands worth of my snake bite serum on this goat because there are people who get bitten in the district and children and I really had to make a call. I'm not injecting a goat with very expensive serum and there is no more serum to be had for many, 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 many miles. And people would normally die before they could get to the next stock of uh, serum. Goat gone. Then I got a call sometime later, could I please come the mamba's back and now her sheep has been bitten. And the sheep died, I got there, mamba was gone again. I found its tracks, I could see exactly where it was coming from to drink. Sheep had died. I felt desperate for this lady. And she was, she was in a state. I said to her, we have to do something about moving your bath or changing the watering arrangement here otherwise this is going to continue to happen. She did not do anything and sometime later I got a call and her pig had been bitten. Now pigs have some resistance to uh, venom because of the very thick fat layer they have but nonetheless it got bitten on the head or face uh, in a place where there probably wasn't that much fat and the pig died. I went there, the pig was dead, the mamba was gone again. And I felt really, really bad for this lady. I said, look, I, are you going to have to do something about this arrangement before there's another accident? Well, she didn't. I got a phone call again. It was quite a long time later. Her horse had been bitten and the horse was dying. And I went over there and the mamba was gone and the horse was dying and the horse died and she lost everything. She lost her horse, she lost her goat, she lost her sheep and she lost her pig, all her tame animals. And I tracked that mamba this time. I tracked it. I tracked it into the bush. I tracked it quite a distance down the bush. It had come from, I, I think I tracked it for about three quarters of a kilometer before it was impossible to track it anymore. And it came from deep in the bush and it could smell the water and there was no water in that area. So the mamba had to come this distance <clears throat> to get the water. And what was happening is it was climbing up this ridiculous tree, getting into the leafy bit, which was just above the water area. And when it was um, ready and comfortable to have a drink itself, at some stage, one of the animals would turn up. Now they would turn up on the side of the tree where it grew upwards past the bath which was the mamba's escape route. So every time an animal got there and frightened the mamba it had to go down past the animal to get onto the ground to go back to its home. And every time it did that it bit the animal. One after the other, one by one, killed all her pets. It's a very, very dangerous situation. And if ever you're in the African bush and it's a hot day, even if it's not that hot, and you go to a watering hole or a water trough where there is some bush near the watering hole or the trough, please look in the bush. You don't know what is going to be sitting there waiting for you. 
Hey, by the way, I do have Patreon, so you can join me there too.